Imagine the Canadian flag without the iconic maple leaf. Imagine the RCMP without the iconic RCMP's uniform. Imagine the nickel without the iconic beaver. Imagine the environment without trappers and fur trade. Nature can be cruel. Trappers manage wildlife while protecting people. Since 1670, trappers in the fur industry have helped develop the trade and heritage of what Canada is today. Happy 150th birthday, Canada. And the OFMF Rendezvous is happening this weekend right now with the Ontario Fur Managers Federation. It's the director of the Federation, Ted Anderson. Hello, Ted. Hello. Good to see you here. Uh, the Ontario Fur Managers Federation, how long has uh, this organization been around for at this point? Uh, we've been in, in, around for 19 years now. Okay. Okay, yeah. what was the primary reason to create this federation? Uh, the federation, we promote trapping, um, conservation, um, management of renewable resources, and education. Mm -hmm. Education is one of the biggest parts of our organization. Okay, why is the education so important? Uh, it's important for two parts, to, to educate the public on the, um, the health and safety issues that go along with managing fur bearers and trapping and that sort of thing. Uh, if populations get overabundant, you can end up getting disease and stuff happening in animals and you can have uh, things like mange happening or mm -hmm. rabies, like right now there's uh, a bit of a rabies problem in the Hamilton area. Oh, is there? Okay. So it's to try and keep controls in the population for that. Even from the safety aspects of uh, trying to control beaver populations in areas where uh, we've had some problems this spring where some beaver dams have breached and we've had roadways, roads wash out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not the sort of thing just from a safety aspect. You don't want somebody driving into a washed out road or something like that. No, definitely. So, so there's a lot of yeah. misconceptions out there, I'm sure, that you guys educate the population on. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. one of the number one reasons why you guys are in existence. So uh, that's right. celebrating 150 years this year uh, with the fur trade uh, being part of our great nation? Yes, we, we figured uh, our convention that we have, uh, we travel around the province every year and hold it in different cities. Mm -hmm. And with Canada's 150th birthday going this year, we figured this would be a great time to bring it to the national capital region and celebrate it in this area. Uh, the reality with the trapping, it's over 400 years but we're joining with the, the 150 year celebration of Canada and of bringing it here. And Where's your main location? Our head office is in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay. And we have basic directors spread right across the province from side to side, uh, representing all the trappers through all of Ontario. There's about 8,500 trappers through Ontario right That's now. That's a lot. There is a lot, yes. Yeah. So how do people become a trapper then? Uh, you have to take, there's a uh, fur harvester fur management course that uh, that's part of the education that the fur, fur managers does. Mm -hmm. uh, we put on a course, it's a minimum 40 hour course that you go through and it's both practical and hands on mm -hmm. when you're going to take the course. It'll be and I'd hands on into you're going to go into the bush and actually do real trapping in the bush Imagine. with the instructor to make sure anybody that's going out to do this uh, we want to make sure they're properly trained and know yeah. what they're doing and understand all the rules and regulations involved. Well, it would take a certain type of person to, to first of all, want to do this and then, you know, brave yes. the elements, go out into the wilderness and, and trap. Exactly, yeah. It takes, uh, it's not for everybody. And a lot of the trappers that are out there, the guys doing it, they're sort of independent and working alone. Uh, quite often, so you have to be comfortable in the bush with what yeah. you do too. Okay, and yeah. you have the rendezvous happening this weekend. We have the rendezvous happening this weekend, uh, this Friday and Saturday at the Carp Fairground, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to this. We've been working on it uh, hard for about the last year and a half, and we've got it set up. There's going to be uh, roughly about 150 booths in the between the arena and the barn that's set up and the riding ring area lots of things going on outside so there's going to be lots for everybody to see beautiful is this the first time that it has come to ottawa the ottawa area it's the first time it's been this close to the ottawa area we've ha we have held it in the past out in lombardy and in renfrew uh, but it's never been held with the, this close to Ottawa before. Okay, so like you said, that is exciting, of course, with all the Ottawa 2017 festivities that are happening this year. Absolutely. It's a big year, the sesquicentennial. Do you is. want to give us, uh, Ted, some of the, some of the uh, examples that you brought here of uh, different pelts, different animals? Um, yeah, well, with some of the things that the people can expect to see when they come by, uh, there's going to be a lot of the prepared tan pelts that people have as some people need help identifying things, some don't. This one, most people know what I it is. I think that's a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's right. They're quite soft too, like a lot okay. of people. Uh, yeah, that is quite uh, soft. Yeah, I don't realize until they touch the animals how soft they are. Um, another one that we have is, uh, this is a fisher. It, it got a lot of publicity back going in about 10 or 15 years ago in the Ottawa area. Uh, the population was high. The population's been taken back a little bit now mm -hmm. and you don't hear about it so much. But there's still a lot of fisher around in the area, mainly in nocturnal animals, so people don't really see them yeah, during the day. Yeah. But they are out there. Um, a beaver pelt that's hooped in wow. a traditional way. Uh, these are the sort of things that you'll, you'll find. There's going to be some uh, Aboriginal booths set up and the trappers councils, the guys will have, some of them will have these furs, they'll be for sale and the people can come by and touch them and, and see uh, firsthand about the, all the different pelts. Okay, and down on this end, I mean, we have some, some artwork as well. Yeah, there's going to be uh, a lot of different artisans and businesses there um, with Aboriginal art going on. Uh, this is one of the local artists, mm -hmm. uh, along with the cards that they do. There's a, another local carver that does the, the small canoes and the paddles that he did oh, up for cute, yeah. 2017 rendezvous. Uh, Bob Kerr carved these set of teals. He's a world-renowned carver that goes mm -hmm. into competitions. He's won lots of competitions. Well, that's incredible. I could never even, I couldn't even dream of making something this nice. Exactly. Yeah, it's really, really nice. So he's going to be there set up. And these guys have a variety of stuff that uh, they carve all different things and different items. All right. Well, it looks like a lot of fun and it's happening two days, 25th and 26th. Yes, the 25th and 26th. So Friday, Saturday. Carp Fairgrounds? Carp Fairgrounds. It's free admission, free parking. When people come in, they're going to get uh, free bottled water when they come in. We also yeah. have 800 uncirculated um, nickels, 2017 nickels for the first 800 kids that come wow. through that we're going to give them away. You can't beat that, Ted. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here and good luck uh, this weekend. All right. Thank you very much. Dan Anderson, Director of the Ontario Fur Managers Federation, joining us here on Rogers TV. Coming up, we have more uh, daytime in moments.